So let's talk about Apple's latest laptop, the M2 MacBook Air. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys if it's actually worth it to buy this over the M1 MacBook Air, because obviously, if we talk about the new M2 MacBook Air, we have to talk about its little brother that it's replacing, the M1 MacBook Air, because if you're gonna buy an Apple laptop, you have a lot of choices now. Apple has come out with some recent redesigns to their MacBook Pro line and their MacBook Air line, so if you're gonna spend this much money on a laptop, you're gonna wanna cross shop and compare from your other options. So let's hop right into it. Starting off with the price because that is the biggest deal when anybody's buying a product, especially Apple products because they come with a steep price, but in the long term, they are actually worth it. And if we compare the M1 MacBook Air to the M2 MacBook Air, the biggest difference you're gonna see is about a $200 difference between the standard version of the M1 and the entry level of the M2. Now, on the surface, these laptops don't look that different, right? We got a 13 inch display on the M1 and we had a 13.6 inch version of the LCD display on the M2. Obviously it's a little bit bigger, the bezels are a little bit thinner. This new M2 MacBook Air has been brought into Apple's more recent design language that's reminiscent of the MacBook Pros that they released last year. But aside from that design difference, the actual technology of the display is the same. It's LCD, it's not OLED like the MacBook Pros. So if you're updating to this new laptop because you're thinking you're gonna get a better display, that's not actually the case. It's only 0.6 inches bigger. So if you want a slightly bigger display, this is the one for you. Both of these laptops offer Touch ID in the keyboard and both of these laptops have best in class battery life. You're talking 18 plus hours. You cannot kill these devices. I don't care if it's M1 or M2. These new M series chips are made for power efficiency. Obviously they can get a lot of work done, but these chips are made to run all day and to get you through an entire day plus of workflow. Now, aside from the price difference and the design difference, the biggest difference that people are gonna see with these two laptops is the actual performance itself. Because the new M2 MacBook Air, although it has an eight core CPU, just like the M1 chip, it has a 10 core GPU. Now, the people that are gonna take advantage of this new graphics processor are gonna be people who do graphically intensive work in Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and programs like Adobe Photoshop. So if you're creative, the perfect person that this laptop is made for, you're gonna see a difference with that 10 core GPU. You. Things are gonna run faster, they're gonna run smoother, and you're gonna be able to get more life out of this laptop versus trying to buy the M1 MacBook Air and pushing it to its limits over and over again, and eventually finding out that, hey, maybe you should've went with the M1 Pro or the M1 Max. This M2 Silicon is gonna be able to get you 90% of what you can get from an M1 Pro in a smaller device, a thinner device, that's just as good. If you can get by with the LCD technology and you don't need OLED, this is the device for you. So to answer the question in the beginning of the video, is this device actually worth the price? And the answer is up to you. But for me as a creative, it definitely is worth the extra $200 that you're gonna spend on the M2 MacBook Air. But I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this device and if it's actually worth $200 more than the entry-level M1 MacBook Air. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.